This guy's this guy over here, isn't he? It's not even listed. He's in the movie. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll talk to him. Hello, how are you? Nice to meet you. You wouldn't let me see this. I'm with Robin. You're standing on a cord here. You're killing me here. You're killing me. So they wouldn't let me see this because well, I was on the phone. With you, but okay. so, what's the movie all about? So basically, it's about how the internet is taking over our lives. It deals with different things like identity theft, pornography. Um, and my part of the story, which is cyberbullying, and so we cyber what? Cyberbullying. 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 Yeah, yeah. That's and when you get pictures of your sister and send them around <laughs> or something. <laughs> kind of, kind of like that. We yeah. we get a kid to you know send pictures and we go to the school. I'm kind of the the really mean kid in the movie. I don't have any remorse. Um, so we do whatever we can to make fun of this kid and ruin his life pretty much. Now you know that what you do with a bully is you punch him back in the nose. Did they cyberly put back in this movie? No, not, no, not. You got away with it? Uh, no, we got away. What kind of example is this for kids? What kind of example is this for kids? It, yeah, bullies can get away with it. Yeah. So, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's not a good example. It, really, it has a bad effect on everyone. So. <laughs> nice to meet you. Have fun. Nice right. Thank you. Wow. You come to me? Joe Hobo plays Jason Bateman's son in the movie. He's on the carpet. All right. You're the, uh, both of Jason's son on the big screen. Great experience. He's a very nice guy, very funny, and an incredible actor. I, it was a pleasure to get to work with him. You're the, you're the victim of bullying, right? In real life, have you ever been cyber bullied? No, I have not, and I'm grateful for that. But it is real, it does happen, and I think this movie will hopefully wake a lot of people up to that fact. Because it's very scary. You are live on Google Plus right now. I got two cell phones ringing. What the hell's going on in your generation with disconnect being overly connected? I don't know. I mean, I try and stay off all that stuff, but my phone's constantly and with Facebook and all that stupid stuff. I try to connect, but at this point, it's impossible. I mean, society is so far in technology that we can't get out. We're stuck. That's how it is now. You think there's real communication there? I'd like to think so, but digital commerce isn't the same. But it seems to be there's nothing we can do about it. We can stop cyberbullying. That is something that us as it can definitely eliminate if people are aware to it. All right, sounds like logic cut out for you. Nice to meet you, all right? You Haley, I'm George Whipple. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you. Good, good, good. Now, listen, your brother and I were bullied. Yeah. We met the bully. So what happens to you on the Internet? You never, you don't. You don't have a phone in this movie, or no? I definitely have a cell phone, <laughs> um, just like every teenager. Um, I I'm kind of included in being one of the bullies. I'm not necessarily very nice to my brother, and um, I end up regretting that. So I mean, was he just boys? No. In cyberspace, no, no. you don't have to be strong. Yeah, yeah there's definitely very meters like the one that I play. <laughs> Cyberbullying. I don't really know what it is. Cyberbullying. When you go on the internet and you find someone to pick on, 
And there's so many different ways to pick on someone up because you can put false things out there and act like you're them or act like you're someone else. And I mean, it's really, really hurtful. Super creepy, man. Oh, it's, it's really creepy. <laughs> the internet's kind of creepy, though. I mean, if you think about it, like everything's kind of creepy. We follow people on Twitter and we stalk people on Facebook. It makes everyone a stalker. <laughs> I know. All right. I'm disconnecting right now. Nice to meet you, Haley. Have fun. Hey, George Whipple, how are you? Nice to see you. Now, you're in this movie that can't get off your cell phone. Yes, but I, that's... Uh, Can you tell me what it's about since I haven't seen well, it? It's, it's, it's about, uh, at least in my storyline, it's into some trouble, and I try to kind of get to the bottom of it and catch some bad guys. It's, it's more of a thrill anything else. You, uh, have you had experience with cyberbullying among people you know? This is sort of a, a new concept to me. It hasn't happened. I've had stalkers, but I've never had I'll bullying. Yeah. I bet you you have. No, no, no. It, uh, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm safely radar from a lot of things. Um, I, I, I haven't had any experience with any of my being cyberbullied, uh, nor have I, but I guess it's a very real thing and something i got to warn my kids about. Talk to me a little about, you know, the premise of the movie, I guess, is disconnect. How connected are you? How much time you spend on your cell phone? You know, what's your protocol when you're at dinner with somebody? I mean, how do you deal with this bombardment of information? Uh, that comes in constantly into your life. I'm on my devices all the time, and it's a great way to kind of build parts of your life that, that are, you know, where it's just boring. I mean, it's an it's incredible that we have access to all this information. The trick is just not to indulge when you should be doing other things, like drive a car or focus on your family or friends or you know, eat dinner. So it's just it's self control. What's the best part of this movie? We'll rush out and see it. It's a really, really well-made film. I, I'm surprised they're not releasing it a year where um, you know the, the award-winning films are out. But this guy, um, Henry, um, really sort of directed a, a great, great film, and it's his first uh, non-documentary. It's it's a quite a thing. There he is now. Yeah, that's him. Right? That's him. Yeah, talk He's to him. A good dude. Yeah. Well, I've heard a lot of great things. I can't wait to see it. Thanks, Thanks for talking to us. See you later. Thanks for talking to I'm George Whipple. Yeah, I know who you are. Nice George. to see you. <laughs> Whenever you. I did, I apologize right here and now. Where am I looking? Uh, there who knows? We got one camera there and one camera there. Oh, wow. okay. We're actually streaming sure. live on. Uh, yeah, no, I Can remember. Imagine it. that. Uh, it's very exciting. Yeah. Um, I uh, I heard you from from Murderball. That you interviewed a, me for Murderable. And you're really a document, not real. Oh, yeah. You have, I am you really have a been a documentary filmmaker. This is your first feature film. It is. How different? It's different because you get to do whatever you want in documentary films. You're always at the, you know, you're always beholden the truth and the reality. And here I get to play. I get to do whatever the hell I want. I get to shoot what I want. I get to ask the actors to say whatever I want. It was a delight. I'm so used to, you know, uh, panicking because the things aren't happening on screen that I want them to when I'm making a document. This was so refreshing. I got to just, you know, play, finally. So is this now the new passion? You're going to leave documentaries behind or going to go back? And I love documentaries. They're my first love. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm making one right now. Um, this was really an experiment. I, you know, I hope people like the film. Uh, it, you know, it's it's I, I got lucky because Jason Bateman, who I've always loved, and I always thought would be a great dramatic actor, really gave me his first, I think, great dramatic performance of his career. And a few people, I think, uh, showed me sides of themselves that we don't see often, like Alexander Skarsgård, Paula Patton, and Andrew Riseborough. Sides of them you don't see usually in movies. Tell me, what's his name? Disconnect. Yeah. Uh, the best way to describe Disconnect is it's a movie like the movie Epic, which was you know a movie about people and addiction uh, this movie is people uh, couples families and it's about the way we communicate with each other disconnect refers to the way that we can sometimes feel alienated from each other and sometimes feel close and the way the technology sometimes influences the way that we talk to each other and relate to each other it's the theme of the movie 
but the movie itself is is a is pure thriller. Hopefully, it's you know is is, is as enthralling for the audience as it was for us to make. I I, I hope people are on the edge of their seats because that's really truly what it is. First and foremost, is like entertaining. All right, can't wait to see it. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, thanks. For yep, take care. Me. Yeah, sure. Uh, hey, I'm George Whipple. Hi, how, how are you? Nice to see you. you well how are you? Good, Excuse good, me, good. I have a little like. What's that? I have nose itch. Yeah, yeah, me too. You know, so I'm, I'm sweating, man. I'm sweating out here. You say no, 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 no. no. Always, you know, you turned away, right? Because wouldn't that that would be the shot that would be all over the world, yeah, like, right? No, no, no. I'm like a, a small booger hanging down. <laughs> Listen, we're all here. What are you going to do? Exactly. But movie stars aren't supposed to be human. They're supposed to be... Are you putting me in the movie star category? But I'm very... <laughs> Tell me about your role in this movie. What's your role? What's it all about? Uh, well, gosh, this movie is just an amazing film that's very entertaining. It's a thrill about really human relationships in the digital age that in many ways is just brand new for us. It's like the wild, wild west and all the implications it has. And I play Cindy Hall, who is married to Alex Garzgar's character. We are a couple who have experienced a great loss. And as we all know, people deal with the way. And I want desperately, I'm very in love with my husband, I want desperately to connect with him again. And he is not wanting that. And so one of the great things about the internet is that you can leave your home and you can find like-minded people to share in your grief, to explain how they've been through those days. And misery does love company, and it does help us get through hard times. Let's face it. But it's just right, you know, the thing is, when it's a man and a woman, or whatever your preference may be, we know that you do that too much, and your husband or your spouse pushes you away too long, it could go into the realm. And then as soon as that line is crossed, suddenly they find themselves wiped out. They've uh, had a horrible fraud committed against them. They have no money. And, and this, she carries this burden of guilt because it seems as if it's because of her relationship with this man. And that's the thing about the internet. While it's great because it connects human beings, people from Japan, America, to wherever, it also can become a praying ground for the most vulnerable people. So go to praying on people, but then a grieving website. And so in the end, it's about this couple who after going through this and having a husband that had fought in Afghanistan and back and become a pa you know basically a, a paper picture pencil guy you know that um, says that's it let's hit the road I'm gonna find out who this guy is you know in an age now you can Google it you can do all your investigations via Google but everything on Google. you can like you could do everything or whatever. live on Google right now but they do it the old fashioned. They go out and they try to hunt this man down and right the wrong that's been done to them. And it's a funny thing. I'm sure we all can connect to this. That even when the worst thing happens to you in life, you look back on it. Thank you. It made me stronger. It, it is a, you develop a relationship with someone, and because of, they are become more in love, and they realize that really material things are meaningless, and the value of their relationship is the most important thing in the world. Sounds like a movie. Oh, thank you. Talk I hope us. you feel yep. Looney, I hope. You are one tall dude. Man, how, tall, how tall are you? 6'4". My camera guy right there. About six two. Probably hit you in the eye, yeah. That's I'll stand on my tippy toes, right. right? So, you know, I'm you know, in the air today for Tribeca, and he's kind of awkward in interviews. What is it like for you being painted on the red carpet by all these flash bulbs? Do you enjoy this? Do you think it's weird? It's just a, it's a part of the job you don't like or you like or what? Uh, it's part of the job, and it, it obviously helps her. 
promoting a film that you're excited about, you know, and this is definitely one of them. Why are you excited? I hear it's great. What's the movie really about? It's really not about the internet and the fact no, that we're all no, plugged no. into our cell phone. It's a didactic film about the, how evil the internet is. It's about people that are trying to connect with people, with loved ones. You know, my storyline is about Derek, an ex-Marine, who's so in love with his wife, but he can't really talk to her about his PTSD and about their issues in their relationship. So they're, you know... He, it's easier to escape and to play like you know poker online instead of talking about real issues because actually communicating and, and, and going you know it's messy and complicated and, and it, it hurts so and he's afraid of that so he escapes into like the world of internet kind of. Did you think there's internet game addiction? Oh absolutely I got friends that that are have, have my stepson's a crackhead for whatever that what's called Call of Duty, right? And it's like he murders people all day on on the on the it's screen. A lot of money because it's you just put in your credit card information and then you sit there and click, and it's something about you know physically having like marks or cash in your hand, or it almost feels like monopoly money. So you just click away. I got friends that have lost a lot of money that way, so it's absolutely a problem. Listen, great to meet you. Likewise. Next time I'll bring an Apple box so I can get somewhere <laughs> close to you. <laughs> but nice Thank to meet you. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, I'm George Whipple. Hello. Hey, you. How are you? Nice to see you. I'm don't, well. don't you think your publicist is hot? Is that the question? My only question. But how about what a great publicist she is? She's, she is a great publicist, too. There you go. <laughs> all right, forget it. Let's start over. You didn't like that question at all. I, you know, I haven't seen it. No, you hated that question. I it was kind creepy. of hated. I kind of, it was a little creepy. Okay. So let's roll in the movie. What what role do you play in this film? I play Nina. She's a rather frustrated, very talented, very bright news anchor who's stuck at a local news station reporting on cats stuck up trees, you know, broken down road systems even though she knows are important in some sense she has no real passion about so she's trying to cover some kind of big scoop and she comes across an internet site an internet site on which there are kids and it's a pornography site and you pay to time with kids in a chat room and so she tries to uncover it it's local as well so she tries to make a, a story of it and really through that she meets this incredible guy called Kyle who's only um, 17 um, and they and for the first time sh she has a real relationship connection to somebody and really what the film is about is the disconnection they'll feel with one another um, and why that is just figuring out why that is this sounds a little bit like films of the 30s and 40s where journalists were actually here actually uncovering evil things is your character a hero in this movie have you seen George? No, I haven't. Just, I haven't let me see it. No, no. Um, I, I would <laughs> need an anti-hero in the sense that she's. Um, I mean, you feel ill for her. She starts off in a certain place. You can see why she's frustrated. She's surrounded in a very male industry. It's it's little. The, the station she's at is archaic. It's a little behind the times. Um, <clears throat> and so she she's really become very out. And then she meets this really young alpha boy, and he's the first one to soften her and to kind of remind her who she is, to make her laugh again, to make her feel awkward. It's inappropriate. The entire, the whole thing's totally inappropriate. Um, but you, you begin to feel how much she feels for him, and you begin to feel that she's to protect him, and that she, she's willing. She's, re she's really willing to go past any huge drive and ambition that she has to be able to preserve as left of his innocence and youth and, and, his, and his vibrancy. Sounds like a great character for you, setting up the news media. What do you think of the news media? It was so interesting. We spent a long time in New York One, and that was, it was wonderful. And I spent a lot of time watching footage of news anchors, reporters that I that I believed might be of the same background as Nina. 
And um, and then, strangely enough, at a junk at one time. This is maybe a year ago. And one of the people I based Nina on interviewed me, which was the strangest experience. And I, I was kind of knocked for six, a couple of minutes. I just sat there and she was asking me questions and I had this blank look across my face. And I, had, I said, I've got to tell you, this is so weird, but I actually kind of played you. And then I started to tell the story and I realized how tragic the story was. And I think she was a little disappointed. But um, there's hope. There's hope for, for every... The, the wonderful thing about the film is that each starts off in a place of total disconnection and then finds some way of reconnecting themselves and the people around them uh, their, or their family, whichever storyline that it is, that it makes them feel alive, that makes them soar, feel happy about why they're here. It, that, that re reevaluate their lives and gives them purpose again. I've been on New York One for 20 years. Have you? Yeah. Oh. So, a lot yeah. of fun. Did you, did you not see us when we were filming that? No, no, no. I've never been in the station. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just in the red carpet. I'm a, I have a different day job. So. Well, thank you so just much. Sorry, such boss. a terrible interview. No. No, it was terrible right from the start. I apologize. I don't know. I don't think I didn't think I... No, George, I really enjoyed it. What? Uh, who was the reporter? I'll never tell you that. Oh! <laughs> Thank you so much. See, he asked a good question. <laughs>